So all morning we talked about theory, about what we could do differently if we could, what we should do if we had a chance, what we could do better, what opportunities exist. Uh, but now I want to talk about what we've actually done. So uh, the topic I'm going to talk about is all kingdom. And it's really a case study that actually we've done in the California market. So uh, the first question I have, uh, normally I ask people is, when you think about Thailand, do you think about golf? And I'm, I'm sure everybody in this room uh, would almost unanimously say yes, because we're all in the golf business and we're all here in Thailand. But would you believe most of the time when I ask people, uh, the answer they give is at least 50% no. So to me, that presents a big opportunity, and that's what got me thinking about putting together this um, type of program. Also, uh, we're a member of the International Association of Health Coordinators, and uh, 450 specialist health coordinators every year provide data to this organization on where their clients go to travel to. And uh, being a member, I was able to summarize some of the data. It's uh, about a year old. Uh, some of the different source markets that we serve uh, in Europe and the United States uh, are shown here. Uh, I've normalized the data to where people in different destinations go to uh, for their international health trips. And as you can see, um, there's a lot of opportunity to grow golf tourism in Asia. Um, the biggest penetration is Scandinavian market, but that's still only about 10% of the trips Scandinavian to go golf are into Asia. Uh, other markets, which are 10 times or 100 times the size of the United States, so the statistics on the number of golfers, golf trips taken, um, there's tremendous upside potential in terms of golf course. Um, but, how is it possible that you could market to these type of offers? Uh, for example, North America is about two thirds of the world population of golfers. Uh, Europe about 11 uh, percent. The point is, it's almost impossible to do this type of marketing. Uh, even a tourist board by themselves, it's very difficult for them to promote golf in a faraway destination to a country that's relatively unknown. A golf course, there's no way. They just don't have the resources. No, they're not going to go out by themselves to promote golf in their own country. Um, even a very, very well-known destination, uh, golf courses can't do that. Uh, certainly a tour operator like ourselves can't. And uh, hotels, well, maybe a hotel could if they have a chain, like a Hilton or a ship. Hundred hotels in the region, they could probably go out and market if they wanted to. But I'm sure if all the entities, players involved, stakeholders, people who benefit work together, it can really be done. So uh, what I did is put together uh, a cooperative called Golf in a Kingdom that is really about the experience of golf in Thailand. Again, what we talked about all morning is it's the experience, it's not the golf. So this collective effort, coordination of different entities, promoting the experience of golfing in a strategic, comprehensive way, sharing the costs and sharing the benefits. In other words, not worrying about one golf course competing against another, or one hotel competing against another, but everybody benefiting because of the awareness, the number of people coming into a region, the number of golfers golfing going up. So we started this project uh, June 2009. Uh, we have support and strong involvement from the Tourism Authority of Thailand. Thank you very much. Uh, seven golf courses, including uh, uh, Stacy and uh, Stuart from Banyan Golf Club, we're here today. Uh, Siam Country Club, who uh, some people are golfing at their golf course. They have two courses here in Pattaya. And also eight different resorts uh, located throughout the country. So everybody pulled their resources together for now two and a half years. But what is this golf experience? We keep talking about the experience, right? So what is it? 
So this is, was in the very beginning of the program to define what this, these are. Is first of all the courses themselves. Um, someone said earlier, if it's just about golf, it's not worth it to be in the golf tourism business. And the way I like to normally put it is, if someone is looking just to play good golf, don't come to Asia. And people say, what's wrong with you? You're a golf tour, but are you telling people not to come? Well, think about this. If all someone is after is good golf, I'll challenge you, anyone, say, in their home country, even in the home city, they have good golf. You don't have to travel, spend a lot of money, plug in your clubs, making reservations, worrying something go wrong, to just play good golf. And yeah, this is a nice slide. So, okay, Thailand also has good golf, so does Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, but this is not enough. But, what makes it special? Uh, it's hard to find these type of resorts in countries that we compete with. Let's say South Africa, Australia. Um, even the picture at the top right is from the Peninsula Hotel in Bangkok. You don't get that type of service, you don't get that type of hospitality that you would in even other countries around the world. And certainly the type of boutique style, a very, very Asian style resource that you can find uh, throughout this region are something that's spectacular and unique once in a lifetime experience. What about the people? Uh, someone said this morning, well, everybody's working at the hotel, they're all working the same. Even if it's someone, a uh, housemaid, or someone in uh, a very bad room, everybody's doing it with a smile. Where else could you go step off the airplane and see people like this from the time you leave to the time you go home? It's not because they're paid to do it, it's cultural, it's genuine. It's another point of different, differentiation, and another point that defines what the experience of golf is. What about non-golf attractions? Uh, someone asked me earlier about families. Uh, well, I'm not talking about families here, but how about non-golfers? Uh, anybody recognize the picture at the top right? That's the time. That's where we are now. That's some of the attractions we can go to right after this presentation, or this evening, or be golf tomorrow. Uh, the bottom left is my favorite activity to do after golf. I go for massage every single time I golf in this country. Okay, people say, well, you must be spoiled. You go for massage. No, I just want to be like a golf pro. All the golf pros have their own physiotherapist. I can't play like them, but I can do like them. So I go for a massage. And last week up in Chiang Mai, some of our vans broke down. We had to bring the people back to the hotel in Elephants. This is a picture from the trip going back to the hotel. Where else in the world can you actually get a ride back to the hotel in an elephant after golfing? That's an experience. That's a dream. That's something that's hard to do in many places. But the most important secret weapon is what I call it. Uh, not only in Thailand, but all of Asia. In fact, in the caddies. Where else can you spend four, four and a half hours with someone who can actually help you with your game? Uh, all you have to do is worry about hitting a ball. Cleaning gloves, cleaning the balls, sending flags, things like that. Okay, I'm kind of preaching to the choir. Everybody knows about this in Asia. But we take it for granted. I go to Australia to market golf in Asia. I go try out some of the golf courses. Again, where John's from, down in the golf course down around Melbourne. I'm no kidding. I think the golf there is better than Asia. But the experience sucks. They send me a huge degree to go play. I go walk around four hours. I can't. I lose my ball. I don't know where it is. I don't know what club to use. How far it is to the green. There's nothing. There's not even a place to buy a hot dog on the golf course. In Asia, every three holes, you got a snack bar. You can take a break. You relax. You can get a massage if you want. Again, we, we take these things, small things, for granted. But overall, that's the experience. So what I did with the golf in the kingdom is put together the golf experience. Because I'll challenge anybody. Yes, some countries have good courses. Some countries have cheaper prices. Some countries have nice locations, good infrastructure, weather, caddies, resorts, great culture. But where else in the world can you find it in one place? Nowhere. That's the experience. So getting back to the marketing part of it. Again, we're going to promote golf in Thailand three ways. Online, 
through media, public relations, and on the ground, being visiting golfers, going to trade shows, putting on events. And we selected this picture, like was suggested this morning, pick one picture that's a great picture. This is the great picture that exemplifies golf in Thailand from Banyan Golf Club, their signature hole. And we use it on all the mastheads, banners, so everybody knows that's Thailand. Online, this is what the website looks like, same picture. Again, keep it going, keep the thing going, build the brand. Uh, media relations. Uh, we've had uh, almost a press release every single month about some aspect about golf and kingdom. Uh, we've had five media fam trips for golf, golf, golf media, and we've achieved 330 international placements, including many in Vice Magazine, Asian Golf Monthly. Because we send out these over and over to the editors, we know them, we're talking about being passionate about them. They get published, they get read, and they get printed, like it's shown here. A few other placements, it pretty much reads like a who who, who's who. Anywhere from uh, United Airlines, in Flight Magazine, Hemispheres, Golf Week, Golf World, you name it, LA Times, ABC News, Reuters, been all over, and, we, and it's, we're just getting started. This is multiple years, and it's going to go forward for multiple years. Road shows, same thing, about one a month, we go somewhere to promote golf in a kingdom, the Thai golf experience. And we have several shows coming up, including the International Golf Travel Mart next month. Okay, great. We did all this work, a lot of effort. Thank you very much, but does it do anything? Okay, nobody has data on golf statistics. Nobody ticks the golf card. But I'm in the golf tourism business. I can see golfers, I can talk to golfers, and I can do my own informal surveys. And I can get some data from the uh, Ministry of Sports and Tourism that this year in Thailand, I'm convinced that although golfers only represent about 3 to 4 percent of the tourists coming into Thailand, they represent close to 10 percent of the spending on tourism. If you, if you check it down to dollars and cents, it comes out to somewhere between 1 to 2 billion dollars of tourism revenue is being generated from golf tourism in Thailand alone. That's a lot. That's a real lot. Again, golfers spending about four to five times the amount of money that the average leisure tourist spends. Okay, so that accounts for all the tourists coming in, big, big bus loads of tourists, uh, spending one day, two day shopping, the golfers spending two weeks on holiday at five star resorts. So there's no question about it. Uh, whether you believe these statistics or talk to individual golf operators, everybody is seeing growth in golf tourism in this country as we speak now. I have no doubt it will continue to grow in the future. A couple of uh, conclusions, recommendations. What we did is identify the markets, segment our product. Don't try to be everything to everyone, but focus on what we do. And what are the travelers needs? What is the message we're sending them? Not we just cheap prices. That advertisement in the, uh, the magazine that was shown earlier was a joke. I mean, someone's advertising $12 green fees? Well, who cares? It costs $1,000 to get here. What does someone care? $12 green fee. But what does the course look like? The pictures of the course were down the little bottom. Okay, I happen to know the course, and I wouldn't send anybody to do that kind of course. But, okay, that's the point. The message is clear. Focus on the quality, focus on what we do well. And build the brand. We talked about branding, branding, branding. Heard about Coca-Cola? Well, we're building Golf in a Kingdom as the brand. That's the brand. Media coverage, fam trips, road shows, logo, brochures, videos, destination pictures, marketing, the trade shows, associations, storage parties, you name it, it's still the brand, Golf in a Kingdom. And initiatives, I talked about that with trade shows, road shows. But one thing, it doesn't come quick. Building awareness takes years. Okay, Coke didn't get to where they were today because they did an 18-month program to build the brand Coke. This is 100 years later. So it's not going to be simple. It's not going to be easy. It's easier for me to speak, but it's very hard to do. But it takes time, and with perseverance, with dedication, it will come. The results will come. More people will travel to Asia for golf, and golf tourism will definitely grow. And the key to the whole thing is the partnership. The, all four stakeholders, or at least these four, if not more, tourist boards, golf courses, resorts, and tour operators, really working together will grow golf tourism. I know this is a Thailand program. I see Vietnam doing it. I see Malaysia doing it. Uh, it definitely is going to pay dividends, but be patient, take time. 
So finally, I want to say that whoever comes here is a winner. Even this guy, like him or not, been here five times. The last time earlier this spring, uh, this year, January. Uh, every time he's come, he's won. And thank you very much for your attention.